Today I'm showing you how you can easily make your Quest 3 visuals look a ton better and it's super easy, doesn't require a PC, and you can do it all from inside of your headset. You're seeing some different shots on screen here. It doesn't translate into a flat video as much as it does in headset. The game changing nature of this software. And I know game changing gets thrown around a lot, but in this instance, I think that it's okay. This is the Quest Game Optimizer. It's been around for a while, but it just launched version 10, and it takes this software and brings it to the next level, allowing you to do everything in headset. I'm going to walk you through how to set it up and then walk you through how it functions. You've been seeing some different side by sides here as we're going. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on side by sides because you're just not going to get the point without trying it. So I highly recommend giving this a shot if you have not already. And if you have used the Quest Game Optimizer, please back up my statement in the comments down below and let people know just how amazing it is. Let's get started with setting this up. One thing you need to know before we move forward is that what this is doing is actually bumping the resolution up inside of the headset, allowing for the visuals to pop more, be more clear, just overall look higher quality and even better. It's not going to do things like add dynamic shadows or lighting effects or bloom or any of those things. But what it's going to do is take the games and make them look extremely clear in headset, which I'm telling you right now, it's a big deal. There are some trade-offs, and I'll talk about that later on in the video as we do the walkthrough of the actual software in headset. But first, let's show you how to set this up and just how simple it actually is. What you're going to need, a Quest 3 or Quest 2. It does it on both platforms and an internet connection. And that's pretty much all you're going to need. You are also going to need developer mode enabled on your Quest as well. If you do not have that on and you don't know how to do it, I'll put a timestamp down in the description. And at the end of this video, I will show you how to enable that. You're going to need some free software, but that's all inside of the Quest headset. First thing you got to do is head to itch.io and download the game optimizer. Now, this does cost. It's not free, unfortunately, but what it unlocks is well worth the price in my opinion. It's on sale right now when this video is made, but it's normally, I believe, $10.99 or could be $11.99. I'll show it on screen here so you can know for sure. So you're gonna purchase this software. You could do it on your phone. You could do it on a computer if you want to. You can even do it in headset if you want, but the point is is to head to the link in the description and purchase the software with your itch.io account. If you don't have one, sign up for one. It's free and it's super simple. Next, in your headset, once it's purchased, no matter how you purchased it, head to itch.io and go to the game optimizer. You can easily do this by searching Google for Quest Game Optimizer, clicking on the link, and then just logging into your itch.io account if you didn't do it in headset, and then heading to your library. You're then going to download this onto your headset. Just hit the download button. It'll, it'll bring you to where there's a couple different versions to download. Make sure you download 10.0 or newer, depending on when you're watching this video. Once you download it, you're going to need to go to your store, the Quest store, because we need to actually install this software. So once you go to the Quest store, you're going to search for some software called Mobile VR Station. This is free, so you're going to search for Mobile VR Station. You're going to hit Get, and then you're going to download this software. Once it's done, you're going to open up Mobile VR Station, and you'll see a menu that says Available Content. You're going to go down to where it says Configuration Wizard and click on that. You're then going to go to Show All Options, and then Configure Scope Storage and then request access. It's going to open up a file pop-up. You're then going to click on the Quest 3 tab or whatever your Quest headset is. Go down to download and then click on the little arrows next to the Quest game optimizer. Then hit continue and install and it'll take a couple of minutes to install. Once that is done, head to your library, go to the unknown sources tab and then click on Quest game optimizer. You're then going to need to enter the email address you used on itch.io when you purchased the software, whatever your account email is for itch.io. Then hit confirm and it'll take a second to verify the email address, and then it'll launch into the Quest Game Optimizer software. You're going to see a red banner at the top, and that's what we have to fix before we get things started. You need to activate ADB. So what you need to do is click on the red banner. It'll bring you to some instructions, and they'll say solutions on the right-hand side. We're going to do solution number two. So go ahead and hit open settings under solution number two. It's going to exit that and give you the settings menu. Take that and drag it to the side so you have that open along with your optimizer and then reopen the optimizer. Then you're going to scroll all the way down to about headset. You're then going to scroll down to build number and you're going to click on it. I think it's four or five times, but keep clicking on it until it says you've, you've activated developer options or whatever it is. Then you're going to go to the system settings under settings in the same menu. You're going to go down to developer options. 
and you're gonna scroll down until you see wireless debugging. Turn that option on. It's then gonna pop up and say to allow. Make sure you hit allow always on this network. Then you're gonna click on wireless debugging again and then pair device with pairing code. It'll then pop up with a code. Now you're gonna go back to the window for the Quest Games Optimizer, put this six digit code into the solution to area and then hit validate. That'll then exit out of the Quest Game Optimizer Exit out of the settings tab and reopen Quest Games Optimizer and your ADB connection should be green now and you are all set and ready to use Quest Game Optimizer. Now, I'm going to go through in headset and show you all the options and how this works. So let's jump over into the headset right now and get started. All right, here we are inside of the Quest 3 and before we move on, I just had to say how beautiful this looks with the optimizer on. Now let's jump in and I'll show you kind of a walkthrough of all the ways the optimizer works and how it works as a tool. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to access it the first time. Like I mentioned, go to the unknown sources. Now, once you have this all installed and set up and you open it for the first time, it'll appear in this little bar over here. You can actually drag that application over to this quick launch bar. Now it's already there, there's only a slot for one thing. So you can't put anything else there. That's why it's not dropping anything else. But if I was to have something else there, I could move it. But you can have one slot available I would recommend putting this there if you're gonna use it because you can easily access it. So you're just gonna click on it and it's gonna open up the optimizer. This is what it looks like inside once you've got everything set up. And we've already gone through getting the ADB set up and getting everything situated so you're ready to go. When it comes to the rest of it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you see this little icon here, HD Plus or HD, or there's other ones, and we'll talk about that in just a second, you'll know that there's a profile already available for that game. So for instance, Border Bots VR doesn't seem to have a profile available, but Downtown Club does, and this is an HD+. And we'll talk about exactly what that means in a second, but that denotes the fact that there is a profile available. You'll have other things like Max Mustard has an HD+, uh, Medieval Dynasty has an HD+. This is actually my recording headset, so I don't have a whole bunch of games installed on here. <clears throat> I installed a couple more just to be able to show you uh, how this works. Now, if you want to open up a game, you either can click on it and just click on it here, or if you want to adjust the settings, click on this one, this little three dots right here. You can adjust which profile you want. If it has multiple, this means battery saver. And we'll talk about that when we go in here to edit. So we'll go to edit. So this is Arcade Paradise. This one has an HD plus uh, profile that increases the resolution by 137%, which is a lot. Leaves the frame rate at default. The CPU at default increases the GPU to very high to account for the fact that you're increasing resolution and then sets the fixed foveated rendering at medium. That's kind of the foveation around the outside edges of your eyes as you're playing. If you've ever noticed, it gets a little less clear so that it doesn't have to render the whole image uh, full crisp. This one is a battery saver account or profile, I should say, which is actually nice too. If you want to play for longer periods of time, you can set the battery saver. It'll decrease things like, what does it say? Refresh rate or performance to save battery if you want to play for longer periods of time. My battery is running a little bit low here because when you run these, it does increase the amount of battery power it's going to eat through. So if you're running like at a higher resolution with more power, then you're going to end up eating through battery quicker, which is why I have a link down in the description to the new Bobo head strap that I highly recommend. It's the best one in my opinion, and it is an amazing battery strap. It lasts for a lot longer, plus you can get extra batteries if you want. They're hot swappable, so you never have to stop playing if you don't want to. Let's go back here for a second, and let's go to another one that I know has multiple uh, profiles. I think Max Muster does. Let's go to edit here. There we go. All right, so this has several. So like... This one is to increase the smoothness of the game. It reduces the resolution, but increases the frame rate to 120 hertz, which is awesome. That is a really good option if you don't care about the resolution being high. Personally, I'm bigger on resolution than I am on uh, frame rate for the most part. So you can do HD, which is better visuals, or you can do HD+, which is the superior, superior visual quality, bumping it up to 122% default frame rate default, very high, medium. Now you can edit these by hitting the edit profile if you'd like, hit edit and it'll add all that to here. Or let's go back, you can set up your own profile. And I'm gonna do that by going down and I'm gonna show you what happens if you have a game that doesn't have a profile. I have zero caliber two, it's listed as zero caliber 1.5 because it's not out yet. Uh, let's do edit. So this one does not have a profile. This is my profile I set up for it. I put it 90 hertz, very high, ultra, and medium. Now, I don't know if that's right, and I increased the resolution to 130%. It seemed to work pretty well when I played it a couple of times just to test it. 
I'm going to have to do some more testing to see. Once this game's out, it'll have profiles available, I'm sure, pretty quickly because he will submit them or the developer will add it. That's the different things you can change. The refresh rate, which is frame rate, essentially. The CPU usage, GPU usage, and then the fixed fluid rendering. And then you could jack up the resolution way high if you want to, but I don't recommend doing that much because not only would it eat through your battery, it's probably going to either <laughs> make the game lag massively or, or maybe even cause massive problems with the actual operating system and how it functions. So this is where all your games are going to show up, and if you don't have a profile, you just tap on the three dots and you set one up. Another cool thing about this is if you go to the settings here, and you'll see this says auto detection. Now, I think that this actually requires the premium addition to this. Now, when I bought this ages ago, it didn't require that. It was just a part of the program. So I think the program is like $11.99. I think it's $2 or $2.99 for the premium edition. Put in the comments down below, though, if that's wrong, and I'll pin someone's comment that actually knows what they're talking about. Now, auto detection, what it'll do is it'll actually, and I'll show you in just a second. If you go to your main library, let's go back to all, and we'll just close that up. You can actually pick a game. Say I wanted to play uh, Max Mustard. You click on it. So HD Plus Profile, I don't know if you can see the notification down there, Quest Game Optimizer. It lists the settings that it's set for it. And it's going to load in to the game. And for me, the game changer of this, and I know that term gets thrown around a lot, but I think anyone that's used this before will admit that this is a literal game changer, is the resolution bump. Um, it's cool to be able to change the frame rate and uh, all that kind of stuff, but this game, this, this tool is designed to make the experience the best possible looking experience that it can. Max Mustard is a great way of testing that in my opinion because it already looks beautiful but when you increase the crispness and the resolution of this game it becomes infinitely better and I was actually shocked at how much better this looked when I activated it I'll be honest I haven't used this tool I've messed around with it before but back when it first came out it required a PC to be connected and to get the profiles from the PC and then I never showed it on the channel because it's always required uh, a PC to get things going, you know, and to activate ADB. And so I wanted to wait until it was possible to do it all inside headset. Now that it is, I'm excited to share it with you. So that's how easy it really is to actually use the Quest Game Optimizer. Highly, highly, highly recommend using it if you want the best visual experience on the Quest 3. It blows standard default Quest 3 resolution out of the water. It's just, there's more power there that can be used. It's just not being utilized. And the game optimizer totally will change the way you see the crispness and resolution inside of your headset. Yes, the trade-off is battery gets eaten through quickly. Let's see what the battery's at right now. I can't tell if it's actually gone down, but it's it has deep through it faster. So I highly recommend a battery strap. Like I said, there's one down in the description. If you want to grab one and check it out, that's the one I recommend. And I'll even do a video on the channel maybe in a, in a week or two going over other options for battery straps. That way you have the best options for you because you'll probably need one using this. But highly recommend checking out if you have not used the Quest Game Optimizer. Okay, if you don't have developer mode enabled, I'm now going to play a short tutorial on how to get developer mode enabled, and you can follow the links down in the description to get all this stuff done. So head to the link down in the description. You're then gonna log in to your MetaQuest account, and you're gonna click create organization. The next thing you need to do is to name your organization. It can really be anything fictitious or whatever you want it to be. Then agree to the terms and hit submit. Meta does also require you to verify your developer account. So you'll need to either use a credit card or two-factor authentication to do that. Once you're all done that, you need to head to your MetaQuest app with your headset somewhere nearby. Once you're in the app, go down to the bottom right-hand side. You're gonna find devices. Once you hit devices, find your Quest 3 or whatever Quest you have and tap on it. You're then going to go down and find the headset settings. And in that menu, you'll see a tab that says developer mode. Click on developer and then once you're in that menu, there should be a switch there that says developer mode. Make sure it is over to the right and blue so that it's on. Well, there you go. That is the Quest Games Optimizer. Link down in the description for the optimizer if you're interested in checking it out. Also, as I mentioned, there's a link in the description if you want a battery headset or a battery head strap for the Quest 3. The one in the link is my personal favorite. Let me know in the comments what you think, though. Have you used the Quest Games Optimizer? And if you haven't used it, I recommend checking it out. And once you do use it, come back and leave a comment on your thoughts. It truly is a game-changing experience on the Quest 3. Let me know what you think, though, down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And as always, happy questing.